So you want to do some game streaming? Okay, I got you covered. You want to do some talking head videos? I got you covered on that too. How about a podcast? Yep, you guessed it. I got you covered. Stick around because I'm going to show you one software that can meet all of these needs and more. So let's get to it. Hello and welcome back. Today, I am going to go over the Streamlabs suite of products, just as I promised. I'm going to cover the game streaming. I'm going to cover using it for talking head videos. I'm going to cover using it for podcasts and some of the other tools that come along with this software. Now they do have a free version and they also have a paid version. I use the paid version because I want all of the tools that they have to offer and it's so inexpensive and it offers so much value that it's kind of a no brainer. If you're gonna do any kind of content creation at all, whether it be game streaming, podcasts, talking head videos, the whole nine yards, then you got to have this software. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And let me show you exactly what this tool can do for you. Because I'm actually using it right now to record this talking head video. And I'm going to be doing some screen sharing on these two screens to show you the other products that it has to offer. So as I was saying, I'm currently using Streamlabs. It's basically an overlay to OBS. And if you've ever used OBS or if you've heard about OBS, it is a free software that you can install on your computer that allows you to do uh, streaming to web platforms. It allows you to do talking head videos, recording. It's a pretty powerful software. Streamlabs has gone and taken OBS use it for their core software and then put their own kind of spin on it. It has specific features for certain things. Now it did start out as a game streaming software, but they have since kind of branched into other areas of content creation. And so it's, it's so powerful and it's so convenient and I'm all about consolidating. So if I could use one software for everything when it comes to this type of uh, content, absolutely, I'm going to do it. And this software has met all of my needs and then some, and it's been extremely reliable and I absolutely love it. There's going to be links in the description to um, their website. So you can go check it out. If you do want to purchase the ultra plan, which I'm going to show you that here as we go through this, the link is a, an affiliate link. So I would sure appreciate that. And I do get a small commission if you end up buying. So thank you so much for supporting the channel if that's the case, but the free version has a lot of functionality. So it's just as powerful if you don't need the extra features, but let's get into it. So the first thing I want to show you is the web side of the platform, okay? So this right here is my browser and it is currently open to the Streamlabs, the, it's called the Live Streaming Studio. And what this allows you to do is like, if you wanna do a podcast, you can actually still do normal talking head videos but as you see here, it allows you to customize it with these custom frames. It allows you to add a streaming avatar up here in the corner. And actually you can move that around. So here, let me show you. So if I come over here to settings, you can see here where I can upload my own picture, which is what I've done. And it allows 1080p, which most web platforms like this that you use for podcasting and you know talking head videos they do limit you to 1080p uh, i think there's a couple that you can do you know 4k or whatnot but i have found that this to be more than adequate and it produces very high quality video so it allows local and cloud recording as you see here so you don't have to worry about if you know disconnect bad connections it will actually download individual files for each one of your guests if you have a guest. 
you can see where it allows you to name the participants and you have some other options here like show names which by turning that on it has my name during the stream down here in the bottom left you don't see it at the moment and the audio status it actually gives you a little indicator at the bottom of the stream to let you know what your network status is and how the audio is coming out because you know obviously if you have any audio glitches or network glitches it can create audio problems uh, so it's nice to have that indication the speaker indicator allows you to when you let's say you have multiple guests when they're talking the outline of their window highlights yellow so that way you know which one of your guests is actually speaking and of course that's the also the display quality indicator so let's see if I can put this on screen okay so excellent so you can't see what's happening here because obviously I'm using my camera in Streamlabs desktop so you can't use the same camera in another application but this does allow me to show you for example the name down here and you can see where it's got this like little red this little X right here I know my name is kind of behind my picture right there but um, it's got a little X right there because I'm not able to utilize the sources because obviously I'm using them here so that's only like that because I'm using it in another application normally you would have my picture here and I actually host a podcast with a buddy of mine um, who happens to live in Canada and we host a uh, it's called United We Stand Divided We Podcast and it kind of is a US Canada podcast it's kind of cool um, I actually put a link to it if you want to go check it out we sure appreciate it um, but here's another really awesome thing about this web platform so in addition to here I'm going to take my uh, screen off there so in addition to having all this functionality you're able to if you come up here you can see right here this section here which says balanced blueprint right now so I have several different setups for the different channels that I do so like this you uh, know this United we stand this is the setup that I use for our podcast so you'll have he and I on here and it's split screen so you'll I'll be on one side he'll be on the other side you can actually take it to where like when one person's talking you can maximize their window in the screen to highlight them which is kind of cool because if you have a guest on and that guest is going to be talking for a few minutes you don't necessarily need both faces you want to focus in on your guests so you can actually hide your face which brings theirs front and center and you can still hear them and that way you can have them to be you know the center of the attention so to speak so if i pop this down you can also see here my gadget guys gadgets i also have a setup for that now i don't have i have this background but i don't have any of the custom fancy um, overlays but i could add one if i wanted to but again it does have a logo and you can just click it and you see where it says drag to move so i can move that anywhere i want i can expand it make it bigger make it smaller it gives you a lot of customization options but let's go back to this one because that's the one i use most of the time and if you look down here at the bottom of course the options aren't available now but when you have multiple guests you'll have multiple options down here of how you want to segment your windows which is pretty cool you also have the ability here like if i were going to come into the session i can test my microphone i can test my speakers it'll play it back to me in my headphones so i can know if it's working correctly you can actually add a separate camera where like let's say i wanted to add a different angle somewhere i could set up another camera connect it to my computer and then i can add that as a secondary camera source now you'll only be able to pick up the audio from your primary audio source but it does allow you to have that secondary camera angle where you can kind of switch back and forth if you want to 
This also does allow screen sharing. I didn't use this platform to screen share because I can't really screen share something I'm using. Uh, it just, it looked kind of strange. So it was easier to use the Streamlabs desktop and configure it and then show you the web interface. But I'm going to show you the desktop in a few minutes when we get to the streaming computer for the one I use for gaming. So make sure you stick around for that. Another cool thing, and you know, this is kind of, um, I won't say gimmicky, but it just adds a little fun aspect to it. Right here under React, it has different like sound effects, laughing, clapping, chanting. It's kind of funny. Uh, we use it every once in a while. It gives you the option to go live if you want to do an actual live stream or you can just record. So like on our podcast, we'll record the podcast and then I'll upload it into our YouTube channel. It just allows you to be able to, like if you have to make any edits, it allows you to do that. And I'm wondering if I can show you. So here's something that's really cool. I'm hoping I can show you. I'm gonna add this to stream, okay? One of the really cool things about this is it allows you to add your own intro video. So when you start to go and record, It'll give me a countdown and then it'll have the intro play. And as soon as the intro is done playing, then we come in and say, Hey, welcome to the podcast, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cause it takes it completely out of post production. So I don't have to do anything as far as adding that in, which has really saved me a lot of time in editing nine times out of 10. I don't even need to edit anything. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll cut if there's like any blank spaces that occurred or if there's, you know, any kind of audio or video glitches that I want to clean up. I'll go in and fix those. Uh, sometimes I'll add kind of a fade out at the end, uh, depending on how that turned out. Uh, but let's see if I can show you that. So if I hit record and I'm going to just say this is test, uh, let's say six, whatever. And so I'm going to say start recording. So you can see it's counting down. And then what's going to happen is my intro is saying, there's the intro. And what you see here, it silences and mutes you. So that's pretty cool. I really like that. This gets done. Now you're actually recording your podcast or talking head video, which is really awesome that it gives you the ability of doing that. Because again, most of the time, I'm not even editing the video after we're done with it. I'm just simply uploading it. After I download it, I upload to YouTube. Now you can upload directly to YouTube in the platform, but I have this connected to my gaming channel, not my podcast channel. So um, I just download it and then upload it into YouTube. So it's not a big deal. So that is the live stream studio that's part of the Streamlabs software suite. And up here, are a couple other things I want to show you. So, you know, if you do any kind of video editing, uh, I'm sure you've probably heard of Descript and uh, StreamYard and, you know, all these other platforms, they all have like a text editor. This has the same thing and it's actually works really, really well. So um, if you look up here at the top, let's go to this other tab. Once you get done with your video, you can import it into this video editor and you can edit it right here. You can also go into this podcast editor, right? And if I click on edit here, it's gonna open up my last stream that I did where I actually used the editor to edit my video. So you can see here, this is a, uh, a recording I did for my Balanced Blueprint podcast which is part of uh, another channel I have. And I was able to come in here on the text and just simply like remove a section of text, which also edits the video. So you could just come in here and take out a section that you don't want. If let's say there's, um, so this is a transcription that's over here on this left-hand side, right? So let's say there's a word that was misspelled. You can just simply highlight it right click it and say correct transcription. So that way you're able to have the correct spelling. The reason why that's important is because this allows you to export 
the SRT file that you need to upload to YouTube for the closed caption. Again, that is super helpful because I struggled with that in the very beginning of all my content creation in creating those closed caption text files. And for a while there, I just let you know YouTube do it, but it's just not that accurate. So once you are done and you export, you're actually able to export. Let's go back to the main screen here. Here we go. So here is where you're able to like right here, SRT file, right? So once you correct that, you just come here and you download your SRT file and then you download the video. You can actually share it direct from here uh, for a link. You can use embed. There's a lot of different ways of managing your recording. This I found to be extremely helpful. It's very powerful and works really, really well. And again, this is part of the Streamlabs product. And this is part of the Ultra. Some of these things are included in their free version, but there's a lot of things that are part of the Ultra. So you can see here the Ultra benefits right here, right? So this is what I pay for. I pay for the Ultra. It's like 19 bucks a month. If you do an annual, it's $147 a year. So they give you a little bit of discount and it gives you the Ultra Streamlabs desktop, which is what I'm using now. Streamlabs web suite, which is what you see this is in, right? So it gives you the ability to come in here and configure some of like your alerts and chat. This is more gaming orientated. Uh, it allows you to set up tipping, which actually you could use for anything, whether it be gaming or your talking heads or whatnot. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, it also has Streamlabs mobile and the, the mobile side of it is really powerful as well. Now I have not used that as of yet, but it has a lot of the same features and you can just simply hit your phone, record, or excuse me, live stream directly from your phone, but it's going to live stream to whatever platforms you have added to your Streamlabs account. And I'm gonna show you that too here in a second. Streamlabs console. Now this is a really cool feature, but unfortunately it's only available for the Xbox. They don't have the integration with PlayStation. I don't really know why. Um, it's kind of a bummer for me because I would sure love to be able to do it all on my PlayStation um, because I don't use Xbox, but that's okay. Because I mean, as you'll see here in a minute, I have my gaming set up configured and it's amazing so i love it uh, but then you have the the podcast editor pro which i just showed you the video editor pro which is that other side of it talk studio that's where i showed you the podcasting and they also have this cross clip which allows you to take your video and you can create clips that are shorts for youtube tiktok that's a really powerful feature too um, I also use another application called Sizzle that when I'm done with my game stream, I just simply synchronize my stream to Sizzle and it actually goes into the gaming um, stream and pulls out clips. It's pretty awesome. My talking head videos, I use Opus Clips and it's fantastic. It does a great job of creating the clip. But one cool thing that Opus Clips does is so for example, on our podcast, where we're side to side in the podcast, it'll actually put us top and bottom in the short, in the vertical window, which is really amazing. So, but here's the tipping. So you can connect your PayPal. Like I just connect my personal PayPal. So this is what the tipping page looks like. So if somebody wants to send me a tip, uh, this is what they'll see. And um, if you want to start tipping me, by all means, <laughs> go to my link and feel free to, to tip. I will put it in the description just so you go check it out because it's pretty cool. Um, it's just an added feature. Again, most of this right here, as far as the integration I have with my gaming uh, channel, um, because that's where I do most of this type of functionality. Uh, another really cool thing is it has a thing called Link Space. It's just actually part of the free Streamlabs suite where you can configure this here to where you can just create this link right right here and it allows you to post that to where you can create 
a uh, kind of like a bitly thing where you just have your you can put your youtube channel here's my streamlabs tipping uh my streamlabs merchandise store my twitch uh, my midlife gaming tiktok web page uh, so you can put all these different links in here here's a contact section really really powerful this is really all i use i don't think it has a limit it's just like it's just really the software is really impressed me honestly um i use it all the time and i use it for multiple different things it's always just worked phenomenal so let's go back to the dashboard so this dashboard right here is the dashboard for the web interface and this is an area where you'll configure some of your settings for um, your account not necessarily the application um, they do have themes and overlays that you can choose from they have a wide variety as you see um, and there's a lot of these um, i'd say a good portion of them are free and then if you pay for the ultra there's even more you get with the ultra uh, again there's just a ton of product here that you can choose from here's another cool thing and i'm going to actually show you this in a different screen but it gives you the ability to multi-stream so i know twitch recently allowed multi-streaming so you can set it up like i have it set to stream to my twitch my youtube and i also have a TikTok. it doesn't show it on here because i'll show you that in a different screen when i go to the desktop app you can stream to all of them simultaneously and what's really cool if you stick around because you'll see it in the desktop side is you can actually have one stream be vertical and one stream be horizontal and you can configure them both separately and how they look it's pretty awesome but you can do um twitter you can do facebook all kinds of different options you can also do um custom destinations if you have a stream key and a url that you want to use uh, for whatever application might support that so again you can see ton of capability so now i want to show you over here on this screen now what you're seeing here is i'm actually remoted into my streaming pc that i use with my elgato 4kx capture card that's why you see um, my chair that i sit in when i game um, you don't see the main screen because this is would be the where the playstation gaming screen would be obviously i don't have the playstation on and it's not streaming any content so it's just a black screen but for this tutorial or review i don't really need that showing so uh, it wasn't a big deal i have a vertical and i have a horizontal and you can actually do an overlay on the vertical as well but i didn't want to um put anything around that because again you have a limited amount of space but over here on the horizontal i have a nice animated border around my webcam and if you look down here at the bottom you can see where i have my elgato 4k capture card my webcam set up for my ps5 now you can add so much more in here i just haven't done it but you can add you know alert windows tipping area i mean there's a lot of custom boxes that you can put into this streaming platform uh, i just kind of keep it simple i don't have a lot of complication i don't you know game professionally so i just don't add a lot of extra stuff but i do have some screens that i set up to where like if i'm going to start my streaming but i'm not ready to actually begin i do have a starting soon screen that i can show and that's what it looks like if i'm in the middle of streaming and i need to take a break and i don't want my camera and my audio to be um, on the screen i can hit my quick break screen and this is what you'll see and then of course i can click back on my ps5 and i can go back to my actual game stream you'll see i'm going to show you a separate video where you can actually see this in action where you can see my gaming monitor which is a 65 inch 4k television it's freaking amazing and you can see my gaming tv which is my s90 uh, samsung oled which is phenomenal i have a wireless keyboard mouse that's got a 
built-in touchpad. It's the uh, Logitech K... I forget the model. I'll link it in the description so you can check it out. And so I have a little table that sits next to the chair. You can't see it in the um, image here, but it sits right next to the chair over here on this side. So I can actually control my gaming computer, excuse me, my streaming computer and what's on the screen from that keyboard. So I don't have to like get up and down to type on a keyboard. It's right there next to me. In addition to that, Streamlabs has another mobile app that allows you to control your streaming from the app. And it works phenomenally well because once you configure all this, you configure um, the remote settings right here where it says remote control. Once you scan this and you set it up in your phone, your phone connects directly to this platform running on your computer inside your network. So it's not going outside your network, it's staying inside your network, but it's communicating with that platform. So it sees everything you already have set up. It's pretty amazing and it works, it works phenomenally well. So that's another way you can control it. So if you didn't have, um, you know, any type of, you know, if you weren't able to actually control it with a keyboard mouse, of course, I know a lot of people, they sit at their desk, they have their, you know, streaming computer on one side, gaming computer on the other side, and they're not a distance away. But me sitting here, I'm a good five or six feet from the television. And you'll see in this other video that I'm going to put up here, remote connection on my phone. Most of the time I use the keyboard because I can actually type, like if somebody's chatting, I can type in the chat because I can put the chat box on the side of the screen. Uh, again, awesome. <clears throat> so one other thing I want to show you in how this vertical horizontal is configured. So once you enable dual output over here, okay, this is in the video settings and it's under advanced, you can take your horizontal and you can configure your horizontal. You can also come to vertical and then you can configure your vertical to be a separate resolution. So like TikTok and a lot of these places, Twitch, they only allow 1080. They don't allow higher um, screen resolutions. So you can come in here and set your resolution to 1080 by 1920, which is the vertical screen resolution. So you don't have to worry about your stream being, you know, really small, you know, in a, in a horizontal box that's supposed to be in a vertical format. It gets all kind of wonky. Uh, you can configure that completely separate, which is really nice. So another thing I wanted to show you here. So this is says multi streaming. It just gives you like, okay, go here and set this up. So if I go to stream, okay, here is where you see all those settings where I have all my systems connected. So this is my Streamlabs account here. It's just where you have to log into the account with your information. Then you can see where I have my TikTok connected. I have my Twitch connected. And then I have my YouTube connected, which is actually what I'm logged in with. So whatever primary platform you're logged in with, that's your primary streaming platform. So when I go live, it starts going through and configuring all these different services and it streams live to them all at one time. Now, keep in mind, if you're streaming to all these platforms, you need some good bandwidth. My internet speed here is a gigabit up and down. I have my streaming computer, my PlayStation, the TV, everything I have up here is wired for the most part. As far as it deals with all of this, this computer is wired. So I don't have to worry about wireless latency. Um, it's just super fast. So I have no issues at all with streaming this much information because you got to remember when you're streaming to all these platforms, it's sending out multiple information. So there's a lot of data flowing to get the stream. And you can also set it up to where once you start streaming, like if I click go live right here, okay, this is a screen that comes up. So you can like, for example, the last game I streamed was Dying Light. I played that last night. 
Uh, you can set your description here, which I just leave it at that because I'll go into my YouTube channel and I'll update where, it, you know, instead of saying, um, well, it says Midlife Mayhem Gaming because that's my gaming channel, but uh, I'll make sure and add in about being Dying Light, you know, gameplay. In here, I can type in Dying Light, Modern Warfare 3, Gran Turismo 7. I played them all. Same thing with Twitch. I can take this out, add in Modern Warfare 3, my, you know, Gran Turismo 7. It's got them all in there. And it gives you some other features here. So like on my YouTube side of things, if I wanted to automatically have a thumbnail uploaded or streaming with the live stream, which will put it in my live section, I can go ahead and add the thumbnail. I can set the category. I can set the privacy. So let's say I want it to just be unlisted. That way I can go into the YouTube channel and I can edit it before it's live. I have it public because I don't care if people watch it. I want people to watch it. And then what I'll do is I'll go and I'll actually use either the editor in YouTube if I want to cut like a particular section out of the gameplay and then I'll save it as new. So it'll create a new video on my YouTube channel or I'll edit it in CapCut on my desktop, which I'm going to do another whole video on that because that's another awesome product that I use. But um, that's a different video. So again, hit that bell icon because you'll want to get notified on that one. Uh, but it allows you, you know, stream latency. Again, I know I have a fantastic connection. I have low latency, so I use low latency. And I haven't had any streaming issues at all. Again, I'll link the gaming channel so you can go watch some of the streams so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. It's, it's fantastic. I'll link the uh, YouTube and the Twitch as well so you can look at all three platforms and you can see what it looks like. So you can see the vertical and the horizontal. But it's... Uh, it's fantastic but you can see over here on this left hand side like i i know i can do vertical to twitch but i can also do horizontal to twitch it looks fine horizontal and twitch so i leave that horizontal of course youtube looks best horizontal because i'm not doing shorts shorts is the only thing i would put on vertical for youtube um but tiktok is a vertical platform it does allow you to do horizontal but it doesn't look as good as the vertical so i use the vertical for TikTok. Now, you're able to add other destinations. Uh, let's go ahead and close this here and let's go to stream. So you can come in here and just simply connect these different platforms. Uh, like if you want to stream to Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, you can also, here's where you can add your custom URL and stream key. If you have a platform that you have specific information for that's not like an auto type connect in here, they've recently added this TikTok. So it you don't even have to like do anything on TikTok. You simply click that. It takes you to a TikTok login. It connects the platform. And as my Canadian friend likes to say, Bob's your uncle. Start streaming. You're good to go. It worked flawlessly. Here you're able to use advanced mode and you can be very granular in how you want your stream to go out. Like the video card I have in that streaming computer is an NVIDIA um, GeForce. It's an older card. It's a 1080. So I do stream at 1440, not 4K. I try to stream at, stream at 4K, but I was having some drop frame problems. And when I brought it down to the 1440, all that went away. So I assume that's probably just the computer's a little old, the video cards, an older video card. So I assume it was probably just, you know, because of that. But 1440 looks fantastic. Again, go check out my channel and you'll see the video looks great. But you're able to come in here and set all your settings for the streaming and the recording because you can set it to where as soon as you hit go live and you start live streaming, it automatically records. So if something were to happen to the live stream, you also have a recording on the computer that you can use to re-upload. You can use the recording you have local if you wanna use CapCut or whatever you know video editing application you use. And you're able to cut up sections and do whatever you want to with that. But it just, again, there's so much capability here. You can configure your audio, um, over here, you're able to do like a little more like how you want your sample rate, 
what your channels are. Of course, mine I just set for stereo because um, the audio I have coming into here is coming from the Elgato um, 3.5 port on the capture card. So it's just stereo. It's not got any kind of channels. Now, my Steel Series headset that I use with the DAC that's connected to my PlayStation, I get full 3D audio while I'm playing. It's just the stream does not have the 3D audio information. It's only stereo information, which is fine because most of the time people aren't going to be listening for 3D audio when they're looking at it on their phone or on their computer. So it works out fantastic. Again, that Elgato capture card has been great. Another thing that I highly recommend, and I have already done a review on that. So I'll link that video and you'll want to go check that out because that video, that capture card is pretty awesome. Uh, but here you can come into your video and uh, I already showed you this section where I showed you the uh, dual output, but you can configure your streams. Hotkeys, I don't really use hotkeys, but you're able to set hotkeys for a keyboard to just simply, you know, hit a key to stop recording, start recording, start streaming, transitions. You can see there's a ton of information in here as to how you want to configure it. Application itself has so much granular control over all the different settings you can set. You can do almost anything you want. It's amazing. In the advanced section here for video, you're able to come in here and set specific color formats, color space. Now I'm not as versed in some of that as others are. Um, I did do um, a lot of, you know, YouTube watching on some of the best settings and I've changed this two or three times. And as of right now, the way it's set, I find it to be the best quality. Uh, I'm not really losing anything by not doing a higher, you know, color format or anything like that. Uh, it looks pretty fantastic. So here is notifications that you can have set up. There's overlays. Some of this I don't use, so I don't have it turned on. And one cool thing is, let me go ahead and close this screen here. If I go over here to the top left, you see right here where it says layout editor. Over here, I can choose how I want my screen laid out. So like I can have a little window for gameplay and I can have these long bars on the side. I can choose to have just the three sections here at the bottom with the main screen being the gameplay, which is what I use. I like that the best. Um, I don't know why you'd ever want six little windows, but you know, I guess that would fit some people's need. Um, but you're able to actually drag these around. So like if I wanted my source selector here on this screen, I can just simply drag that over and switch those. And if you choose one of these here where you have a lot of these different options, you can choose whatever you want to be in there. So like I can say my editor display is down here in the little screen if that's what I want. Um, it's very customizable in how you want it. Um, alerts and widgets. Here you can configure a lot of different things for your alerts and widgets. Um, like if you have a new follower alert, how the widget looks, how it's going to alert you. So again, <laughs> tons of customization. To me, it's almost too much. You know, it's like if, if you're not familiar with all this, it can be a little daunting and a little overwhelming and like, what do I do? Um, which is probably why I haven't set some of it up because to be honest with you, it's a little daunting trying to figure all the little details out. But you know, the way my stream is right now, it's perfect for me. I, it looks good. I don't have a lot of clutter because personally myself, when I'm watching somebody else's stream, I don't want to see all these little boxes. I want to see the gameplay and I like to see their face cam. And you know, having borders and whatnot is totally great, but when you get too you know congested on the screen to me it takes away from the experience of watching the gameplay because i'm there to watch the gameplay i don't i'm not there to watch 
you know, um, an alert pop up for a new follower. That's great that he's got a new follower, uh, tipping and all that. That's awesome. But I like it to where it's kind of just clean and simple. Uh, so that's the way, you know, I utilize it. Um, here just shows you all the different recordings. You can see that <laughs> I have a lot of gaming recordings. This cloud bot, if you look down here, it's going to open a web page which goes to your dashboard and actually allows you to customize a, uh, it's like a chat bot where it can watch for like, you know, swear words you put in there. So it'll, it'll stop them from showing up in your stream. Uh, there's other protections you can put in place. Um, I think it's very, very cool. Some of the features, as you can see, are ultra only. Anytime you see this little circle icon right there, that's the ultra version. So if you pay for ultra, you have that available. If you don't, it's not available. But there's so much in here that's free. So there's no reason not to use it, honestly. But it's nice to have that if you wanted to use that. I do have some things set up. I set all my stuff to be 18 and over, that it's not made for children. So, uh, but it doesn't mean that somebody that's 16, 17, 15 years old is not gonna go watch my stream. So I just try to kind of control that. You know, I'm not gonna go into all these different things here because there's, again, I could be talking about this product for an hour and a half and obviously i don't want to do that <laughs> you don't want to hear me talking for that long about it either um so i just kind of wanted to show you you know the power that this platform has and 80 or 90 percent of the functionality is all free you have podcast capabilities you have online editing capabilities for those podcasts you can use the online tool for talking head videos you can use the desktop, which is I'm actually using the Streamlabs desktop on my laptop to do this video. I've configured my scenes where I have this scene over here for this screen share, this scene over here for that screen share. And I just simply can click my scenes over here in this bottom section, which is actually over here. So if you look on my uh, screen here, like I have quick break starting soon, PS5, those are all scenes. On my laptop right now, I have a scene that says webcam, a scene that says webcam and desktop, and a scene that says webcam and RDP screen, because I'm actually remoted into my desktop. So I can just simply click on those scenes and it switches seamlessly between them, which is, you know, it's super nice that you don't have to worry about, you know, reconfiguring anything you just simply click the scene and away you go and again you can add multiple sources here in this section here so you can have different audio sources you can have multiple webcams so if you had two webcams you could put both webcams and then you can resize them on here to where it could be however you want up in the corners on the sides whatever you want to do totally up to you how you want to configure it so as you can see the Streamlabs product is phenomenal i used to use Descript for my podcast and then I use something else for my talking head videos. I did use OBS for a little while. OBS is still a great program, but you know, the Streamlabs uses OBS for their core software. That's what they use on the back end of their software to, you know, make it work. They just put their own kind of spin on it. Why would I use two different programs when this does everything? I can use one application for everything I do. And on the website, I have multiple um, configurations for you know, the podcast I do, my tech channel I use for talking head videos, um, another channel I do for talking head videos and a podcast. And so I can just go in there and change it and do it. And I don't have to reconfigure anything. I don't have to change applications. It's all in one application. If I want to do screen sharing in the web platform, no problem. I can share a video, I can share pictures, I can do share a screen, I can do whatever I want. So again, why would you want to use any other product? I've used multiple products and I stopped using them and I started using Streamlabs because it's so powerful, it's so easy to use, so easy to configure, it meets all the needs. Again, all the links are gonna be in the description to the things I spoke about. And if you have any questions, comments, please hit me up in that comment section and I'll be happy to get back to you. I definitely do my best to get back to everybody that makes comments um, because I try to 
treat people like I want to be treated. So if I make a comment, I want someone to respond to me. <laughs> so I feel like if someone's going to make a comment on my video that I need to give them a response back. So I do my best to do that. And I usually do a pretty good job of it. So uh, definitely hit me up if you have any questions or comments. All I can say is give it a try. You know, um, it's not going to hurt to install it, test it out, take it for a spin. Who knows? You might just absolutely fall in love with it. I know I did. And you can use it for your gaming. If you don't game, you can use it for your talking head videos. If you're starting your own content creation um, journey with YouTube, this is a great platform to start with because it gives you a lot of options and a lot of functionality. Go watch this video on the Elgato capture card because that's a pretty awesome product. And we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.